Greetings mortals, I am Natus, one of the rulers of the underworld, or specifically the ruler of Manga Hell, and today we'll be reacting to the newest chapter of One Piece, chapter 1033rd. Shimotsuki equals a bull. Alright, I guess we'll be focusing on new captain now. Kinda weird that we are focusing this, this late in the game, but whatever can you do. So anyways, we start the color spread with uh, Tashigi playing the villain for Bay Penguins that make believe as heroes. Surprise, there's not much fan service, fan service to, from her in this, in this panel, considering the fact that the last uh, time we've seen her, she was literally tied up with, gold, with chains and having her boobs out. And now she's just wearing a, uh, a shark mask thing on over her and waving a white flag but uh what can whatever my own disappointment is immeasurable so anyways then we cut to um outside the skull dome where we have Zoro versus king as narrator's like Zoro has to deal with a rogue sword as was like anma stop draining my energy without permission uh, as he, as we see him trying to like get control of Emma, but it's still like draining him, and he still seems to be just his hand. As is, is King is like trouble in paradise. As he approaches uh, Zoro, which I'm thinking the whole paradise section might be because Zoro, you know, wants to like, have more of a proper swordsman duel. I mean, even if he like doesn't care about how he fights, he just has to win. He probably would. To prefer a proper swordsman duel. Anyways, then we have him. So be like, huh? As King uh, stands up to him, stands right at him, as he stares him down, as Zoro stares up at King, and he doesn't really get ready to strike at all. As was like, what are you trying to pull? As Zoro goes to stab uh, King, and it does hit King right in the middle. He doesn't prevent or anything. He's at. But anyways, that also is, but that seems to be what he was hoping for because he says, "Ah, oh, a direct hit." As Zoro's like, I guess his sword fell down during the pounds. He's like, "What?" As then we have a, like a big explosion, outside, which now we cut to the inside school dome, left brain tower, pleasure hall. As King's like, "Mu ha ha ha! You just called the pirate hunter, right?" He doesn't stand a chance against King, as the son's like, huh? And then Queen's like, he's all surviving Lunarian. They were all supposed to be eradicated. Those monsters could thrive in any inhospita inhospitable environment. The war threw at them. Then we got a, panel, a weird panel with a bunch of soldiers fighting amongst each other, as, as Queen's like, in the distant past, they were considered gods. And then Sanji's like, all right, you're hyping Lunarians, but how could beings like that get wiped out? And then we have Queen be like, that's something you have to find out for yourself. <laughs> Which makes me now think there's going to be a moment where Sanji's going to be talking with King or something. I don't know, maybe Robin's going to be. But yeah, anyways, yes, Queen's getting ready to fire one of his laser beams. Then we cut back to the outside. And from the explosion, as then we see a uh, Zoro in the rubble. It's like, ugh, huff, huff, close one. It would be, I'll be a god if I used, um, uh, if I, be god if I used Armand a second later. As King's trying to approach him again, as Zoro's like, how is he still unscattered? He just blew himself up. Well, to be fair, people that have explosion capabilities like King seems to have do usually have some kind of explosion. Resistance factor or something, or at the very least, they seem to regenerate pretty quickly from explosions. So, anyways, then we have King being Zorbi like one sword style. Aye, aye, leap for lion song as he cuts King uh, from ha from feet to top, which it does seem like it kind of affected it. Like, you can see like the strike from it, but it was like, huh. As he immediately takes a nova, as Zor King immediately recovered and started pulling his head back in. As Zor was like, nothing? What? Nothing? As King again uses his technique called Imperial. 
as I was like, no way, that was one of my strongest techniques. Shik, shik. And so I was like, whoa, stop it, Anma. Imperial of Tempio. As he hits at, uh, hits Zoro, as I was like, not no. As that hit is directly at Zoro, and, well, not directly, it hits down the side, and Udon, what's the, uh, the, the technique, although I think in the actual official translation, there's a bit of a different spelling, different uh, name to it, but I don't know exactly what's the has off of that. So anyways, it hits Zoro, and he starts to cut blood, as it also, like, racks a good portion of the building, like, a bunch of it is getting crushed right now. So anyways, there we have uh, King in his height, but well, I think in his, like, main form being, like, a sword's been beaten by his own sword. That's a first. Eh, I, by the way, we actually heard about this chapter yet. It may actually be a first, but it's pretty funny, though. So, anyways, then we have Zoro falling down. As he takes another, the, his sword, he, as Zoro's like, Sendai Kitatsu. And now we get a bit of a flash, we get a bunch of flashback panels. As we have Zoro, uh, it's uh, Kyokatsu, I think his name was, or something. As he's like, you already wielded Sendai Kitatsu. That is one of mine. So it's like, what, really? Then we have when he first got Sendai Kitatsu, as I was like, it's cursed. As a store owner, was like, I, I, I can't sell it to you more. If you end up dead, your blood would be on my hands. As I was like, I'll take it. Anyways, then we have what seems to be Z uh, King Amiri kicking Zo back under the field or something. As he's like, Risking yourself to save a sword crush. Have you lost it? Which is actually pretty funny considering the fact that at the beginning of the arc, or at least the middle portion of the arc, Zoro stated that don't throw your life away over some sword, over a sword, and now he's doing the same thing. <laughs> Zoro's a bit of a hypocrite if you ask me. So anyways, then we have Zoro uh, on the ground as, he's, uh, as he falls down as King uh, approaches him. As uh, Zoro's like, it burns. And then Zoro, like, she's like, and also, I guess that's the one with the queen I had. As Zoro's like, what are we? I didn't, it didn't fall off the island. Wando in Shimonji. As then we have a bit of a flashback with Zoro's flashback, which doesn't make sense. Like, we haven't seen it in a while. As like, as Zoro's like, Sensei, please let me have her sword. Okay. As the Sensei's like, okay, it's yours. And then we have like a picture of Purina as just like, I'll get stronger. Stronger for the both of us. Strong enough that my name reaches up to the heavens. I'm going to be the world's strong greatest swordsman. And then we head back to the uh, Kitatsu as he's like, it must be fate. Well, flashback to Kitatsu as he's like, it must be fate that white katana of yours is one, the Inchimonji. It was forged by the same man that made Adma, the master sword, swordsmith, Shimotsuki Kozaboro. As Zoro, I think this was actually in the chapters, I just maybe have forgotten, but I guess it's gotta be explained this chapter. As Zoro's like, I don't have time to think about it, be it before, but how did a sword from one wind up in the East Blue? Wait, wait, what? You didn't have time to think about it before, but now you're gonna think about it while you're in a bloody battle? Okay, is a bloody battle like some uh, place where you think of something? Similar to how Vanika has this uh, intention of thinking whenever there's a way to get people to want to kill her or something. My god, what the heck is, wait, what the heck is up with Zoro's thought process right now? Anyways, then we have King using Imperial Twin Blades. As, as also King's like, so you've picked up your three swords. As Zoro's in like, Emma, as it again starts to drain Zoro's hockey. As uh, King gets ready to slash at Zo, well, King gets ready to slash at Zo, as Zo blocks it, but sends him below. Ugh, again, as Momnosuke, and we see a flashback with Momnosuke, as uh, Momnosuke's like, Zo, Juro, I was told not to say Sunachi. As Zo's like, it was just something I heard from an old geezer in my village. I never used the word myself, as, again, this is something we again had like at the beginning of the arc. Which were being my own right now. So there's most like what like before, and now we get like a more prop. We start getting like more proper flashback, and so it's like half half. 
That geezer always said, say by the show, never bothered learning his name. As then we get uh, a bit more explanation as we see uh, Kuina, Kuina and I'm going to say geezer as, so it's like, and I only found that out that he was Kuina's grandfather after he croaked. So yeah, so I guess that's the explanation of the old geezer. So then we have Kitetsu being like, the master swordsmith, Shimetsuki Kozabo, left this country illegally over 50 years ago. So yeah, I guess, this is, I guess, the little thing that uh, Oda was actually mentioning about us getting like a bit, it's not going to be something, something I might explain later. I think it is actually one of the more, uh, I'm not sure if it's in volume 93, e, SPS, or volume 94, it's, I think around that time period was explained. I think a bit earlier before, but I'm not exactly like, sure. I think it was like mentioned when that like guy who has nails in his nose was stated. So yes, now we have uh, Zoro having a bit of a flashback, and we have 13 years ago, the East Blue, Shimotsuki Village, Zoro's hometown. And we have people like, as we see like a bunch of kids like training swordsmanship skills, and they're like, ha, huh, yeah. As they have the old kids be like, Sunachi, it's the bell cry that gives you courage. And you have Zoro being like, I don't think I'll use it. It sounds weird. Say, old man, is it true you were a samurai? As the old man is fishing, or something to do because of what is fishing. As I was like, everyone at the dojo says you were. And then we see because of all, because of and he, you know, looks like a very stable samurai. I said the fact that he seems like a giant one brow, like his. Bro kind of looks like a cigar, honestly, like, put on his hat. <laughs> like, he's very un unimpressive. If I give him his style, like, village geezer. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. As the, because the boy's like, quiet boy, you're gonna bring the marines on my hat. As I was like, why would the navy care? <laughs> so, I guess just being a samurai gets you in trouble with the marines, possibly. Although maybe that might refer to something that he did beforehand, like maybe rocks or something connection, I don't know really. So anyways, then we have Kozabo be like, none of your business, now scram you snot-nosed brat. Which again, kind of get, makes me think that he'll also be a part of the rocks or something like that. As then Zoro like sticks his thumb out, he's like, screw you, you use this old wind bag. Anyways, then we have uh, Zoro training outside, as he like, well, oh, Next to the geezer, as he like, where the like wooden something, I think like remnants of a tree or something, as he with those sticks, swords, as he's like, rah, rah, as like, because the boy notices it, as because it was like, like, you fell out with practicing at the dojo, as so I was like, I lost to Korean again, I need to train non stop. So then we have like a, two swords that I'm guessing is where those two swords that uh, Zoro had at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the story that Miho destroyed. As uh, Zoro's like, why? But I don't have any money. As because I was like, it's fine, take them. They are not much anyway. As they, like Zoro is like, oh, very happy to see these blades. Blades that he has, that he gave him. And then we have uh, because about saying stuff like I can only make one once like this now. Use them for tr your training. So I guess this uh, so I guess this is like something he just made like randomly. As because it was like, listen, swords exist to cut people down. With Smiths created them, they ensure they can take as many lives possible. It was like, huh? And also, because of all, like, unsheaths one blade, which I'm guessing might be his own, I don't know, really, just one blade. As then, anyways, we have a bunch of panels, but I'm guessing that these are all supposed to be, like, Zoro's swords, just a random sword style. As then we have, uh, because of all, explain what, each blade is like a person with a unique disposition. A swordsman is who tames the sword's wild nature and bends it to their will. Which makes those goofy drawings he make the or the mix of it possibly canon. About that's how they look like. So everything we have uh, the because of all being like as uh, Zor is holding his blades as he's also like, which does a pretty goofy looking panel in all honesty. As because of all starts saying 
It's a joke that deadly swords are believed to be cursed. That's just how named blades are. I consider it pride. Praise. Let the weak spread their nonsense. So yeah, they're like, yeah, all that rumors about cursed blades, all that they are just swords whose personality is very dangerous and very bloodthirsty. It's not their fault. The sword's fault that the that everyone who wields them is just a pathetic weakling. So Zenko suppose like as Zoro starts to practice using the two blades, it's, it's like it means those swords fulfill their purpose well. And then we have the the will be like, I craft and my magnum opus. And when it I was still young, the temperament of that sword was something. You get the chill just holding it. I named the blade after the Lord of the Underworld. Of course, behind that end, like those, like oh, the Lord of the Underworld, Enma, as he now makes the connection. So yeah, as he's still just standing there, and now those, like it's called Sumitsuke Village. Sumitsuke Village. That doesn't seem like a coincidence now. Flashback panels where we have a bunch of kids being like, "Did you know the village was founded by pirates? My grandpa told me." Then we have uh, the. Shimotsuki be like the master swordsmith Shimotsuki Kozaboro left this country illegally over 50 years ago. It's like that Giza was a samurai of Wano. He was the blacksmith Shimotsuki Kozaboro as we get on of him. And then we have the will be like the name blades stay vigilant. They wait patiently to find a swordsman worthy of them. And then we add that and sh uh, shop owner be like it is set a sword chose its wielder. As uh, Zoro again looks at Anma as King finally comes down. I guess during this entire flashback, he was just staring there down at him. As then we have uh, Zoro, like, that's what this is. It's tell testing me. As then we see Zoro again grabbing his sword, getting his hockey drained. As Zoro's then like, I'm guessing out loud now because of the pa bubbles. As Zoro's like, the sword isn't acting out of malice. That means I've just not been measuring up to its standards. You tell me Oda was easily able to wield you? Which is uh, something that people have actually been matching during the flashback with Odin about how easily Odin seems to be handling them relatively young. So I guess that's the case. As then we get like a knockout of the Emma, and it was like, even while this much hockey was spraying out of him, is that it, Hanma? As then we get like a bunch of random beast pirate soldiers, and we all know where this is going at this point. As they are like, Look here, it's the pirate hider, King son. Let's help him take his head. We're sure to get promoted if we do. No, you don't. And then so I was like, What do I do? I can only appease it, it if I keep going all out with my hockey, but that could kill me. As there we have the these pirates already getting that treatment. As they get conquerors hockey out of the world. As I was like, no, this is how it's meant to be. As we see the random riffraffs falling down. As King's like, I see. So you also got King's um, kingly ambitions. As I was like, huh? As we see like this panel where the sword seems to be like engulfed even more in hockey. As they get another flashback with Luffy, uh, as Luffy's like, The world's greatest swordsman, that's perfect, the future king of the pirates wouldn't sell for anything less. Not as possible as me, but let's be right, that's what this is supposed to kind of be. So anyways, then we have uh, Zoro be like, I guess you're right, after all, I made promises to my captain and my oldest friend. Which is... Referencing Luffy and Karina, or just Luffy, depending on who you ask, but either way, Luffy and Karina most likely referenced. So anyways, then we have the narration and the end of the chapter to be like, surpassing limits. Is that a Black Clover reference? Eh, I don't know, possibly. I mean, I feel like at this point, Oda would probably know about his competition from Shonen Jump manga. So yeah, this is the end of the chapter. This chapter, honestly, if you're a big Zoro fan, you'll love it. If you're a big Swordsman guy, you'll love it. it but on and so, it's just like giving more inf 
more kind of more like a development stage to it, like more fleshing out Zoro's character, and definitely be being a bit better. I can definitely see that the water sh uh, Oda, sorry, like, sorry, that Oda wants to, I like, kind of get like a chapter focus on Zoro, then chapter focus on Sanji, although weird enough. Hiyo and Ochi don't get nothing to know in there, but I guess it could be a bit later. But yes, anyways, we get this kind of chap chapter with these two. Uh, so I guess there's some people thinking that Zoro and Sanji are gonna like defeat their opponents at the same time because usually they do it one does first and then the other one, which I could see it happening. And I feel like there's enough setup this uh, arc that well, this for these fights that it would make sense for it. So we'll see it, and I can't wait to see how this is going to go. I can definitely see like the next couple of chapters focusing fully on the on Sanji versus Queen, and then like ending it. Maybe like two more chapters if that's the case, but we'll see how things are going. So, anyways, I hope you like this reaction. I hope you leave a like, subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all of you mortals next time. Goodbye.